Hey, very warm welcome back, folks. You're watching the Ultimate Pool Pro Cup live on BT Sport on your festive season. Brilliant matchup in prospects as we enter the last 16. Top Cat Tom Cousins taking on Carl Houdini Morris. Stephen Jameson and Sam Webb with you on commentary for this one. Really, really looking forward to it. We didn't really see too much of it. Didn't need to see too much of it, really, in his in his opening match there against Emma Cunningham, but Carl Morris has more than earned that nickname of Houdini. The things we've seen him do on the ultimate pool table in 2021 have, have delighted us, infuriated players in equal measure. He's produced some magical moments. He, he is one to never take your eyes off. Absolutely, there's always something going on when Carl Morris is about. Always entertaining, always a joy to watch. I do think he's going to need potentially some of his Houdini magic because if you go on performances of the first two matches, Tom Cousins was up and running, playing like the world champion, the two-time world champion he absolutely is, and Carl wasn't at his best. Didn't get a hold of that break, did Carl Morris, but he is going to make a ball, so all you can really hope for is first opportunity. He's going to get it. And uh, not too undesirable split either. I must say, I, I, watching the start of the match against Emma Cunningham, I, I thought Carl actually started really well, looked really sharp, and then just got a little bit bogged down as the match grew grew longer. Yeah, it, almost like he, he talked himself out of a few few visits as a few times he was able to get out and was still frustrated and shaking his head and annoyed with the fact he wasn't in better position throughout and the couple of mistakes he, he did make seem to annoy him but overall he played a, a solid enough match but Emma didn't punish too many of his mistakes which kind of led him off a little bit you won't get the same leeway against Tom Cousins who was very very clinical in his match that's a great shot on. from Carl there opened everything up how good was Tom Cousins, by the way? Yeah, just brilliant. It really was so good to see. So clinical. And for our Ultimate Pool fans who were watching the Pairs Cup a few weeks ago and saw Tom Cousins' team with Shane Thompson in qualifying through to the next stage of that one, it was remarkable that night because that is by far and away, I think, any of us, the worst that Tom Cousins has we've seen play. Missed more pots that night than I think I've ever seen him miss in six years. Uh, Carl Sutton, Scott Gillespie and Shane Thompson watching on. Call. Yeah, I completely agree with you. It was a, actually the, the fact they were able to get through playing the level they did was a, a surprise. Um, but I think it just shows you Tom was visibly nervous then and it, it carried over to till today. But Oh, is that going to stay up? No. Oh, wow. Is he on the next ball, though? I don't think he is. I'm not sure he can get past the eight ball to that yellow. It's tight. I think he's looking at taking the one he's closest to to the top left. Which is, I mean, I can't believe that's dropped. But I think he was giving a little bit of, he's having a good look. He is. Oh, he's having to, uh, this, is, this is some of the Houdini magic here. Watch out for the cloth on this one. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure he's on his next ball, but. Yeah, you, you tend to see a little bit of everything with Carl Morris, and this is this is what we come to love. And what I love as well is he absolutely lets people know exactly what he's thinking. Yeah, I'd like to see that one again. I think, think he's moaning motion. about it's the light getting in the way. Maybe. It's, uh, I, I think that sounds like a you problem, Carl. <laughs> Bit of a hit and... Bit of a hit and hope, and as, well. as with many hit and hopes. I think he's not happy with that light at all. Yeah, not happy at all. Now goes and sits in the wrong chair as well. <laughs> it's never a dull minute. Now, Tom Cousins needs to put all that out of his mind and just take out a very comfortable open table for him right now. Nice, clear. Only two yellows in the way. You never want your opponent to have first chance in a match, but if they are going to have first chance in a match, this is how you, they want, you, want, you want them to leave it for you. Once they've cleared four or five of their balls out the way, just give you a nice chance to get your QR going once again. Tom's had about 
45, 50 minutes, just sat there chilling out since his victory. And this will just get him going once again. And honestly, the way that he approached that match against Jimmy Croxton, he was almost chilling out at the table in that match. It was just, it was a breeze for him. I spoke with Jimmy actually after the match and you sort of, he was pretty magnanimous in, in his defeat and he sort of said, well, you know, I missed a couple of chances early on, but after that he's he's just at the kill switch. You know, what, what can you do? You just got to sit back and just enjoy it and get shot. Yeah, Jimmy made a couple of mistakes in the match, but everything was magnified and punished because of the level that Tom Cousins played at. I think Carl Morris is going to find that in this match. Mistakes get punished when this man is on form. Tom Cousins has only recently joined the Ultimate Pool Pro Series, but he comes in with an enormous reputation, a two-time world champion, and expected to do big things in 2022, starting with this competition right here in the Pro Cup. He won the 2019 Supreme Series event, which was really one of the precursors to the Ultimate Pool Pro Series. And he's won so many titles down the years in multiple organizations as well. He's, he's a true, true modern great and fantastic to have him on the tour. And when he gets going, he is some, some player. Yeah, and it's all built on the back of a, a massive break. He's an incredible player, but he's not just a, a big break, but the break he is one of the best I've ever seen. Let's see if he can back that up here. Oh, straight away. Look at the power he's got on that. Oh, I can't wait to watch this in slow-mo. <laughs> that was astonishing. He generates just a huge amount of power. Didn't get the world's cleanest cue ball. It, it looks flashy, but generally speaking, the, the players will want to keep it on the deck. Yeah, they'd rather see it just travel up the centre of the table rather than jump up in the air and be kicked all over the place but that break there just gives you an idea of the level of power he manages to break with it, and it was something that Nick Hill mentioned earlier and whilst he was watching this match it's it's the easiest cue power you've ever seen it, yeah. it's such a I don't want to say a lazy cue action because that would be a bit unfair but you know what I mean it, it, it just very little effort there, or at least seemingly. Yeah, it's not like he's throwing his whole body into it. He's not jumping into the shot or anything like that. It's just keeps himself in a really nice position and just generates extreme power easily. I think that's the word, actually. It stumbled across it. It's, it's effortless. Yeah. Just a key positional shot here. If you can land nicely on the next ball, just to allow him access to the one on the bottom cushion. Probably screw on and off the cushion now. Not sure if he can just drop it in and play for the one at the bottom of the table. Would have preferred to be a bit straighter on it. But still get good position. Yeah, comfortably enough. Lovely shot. Ominous signs from Tom Cousins. Carl Houdini Morris has to sit in his chair and take his medicine there. Super stuff from the Welshman. And Carl has his work cut out. What a season he's enjoyed, though in 2021 ended up sixth in the rankings and something i know that filled carl actually with a lot of personal pride he's he took a long time out of the game he was a almost a, a child prodigy really a, a youngest ever world champion in 1998 at the age of just 21. he's still not that old now because of that and uh, it still feels like he's got plenty left in the tank to contribute but he's taken a lot of time out of the game and he feels that he's not had the had the table time, had the dedication in, the, in recent years to compete with these sort of young bucks that have come up and, and risen in his absence. So actually to get some good results and to finish in the top six, he's absolutely delighted. Yeah, and I think he wouldn't have been fancy to finish in the top six having taken such a break from the game. So it's a, a great first year with Ultimate Pool for Carl Morris. Really looking forward to seeing what he does going forward. Because I think he's going to continue to improve 
and important to mention with style points. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Nobody does it quite like Carl Morris, that is for sure. Decent break, good opportunity, but this is where the pressure starts to build. And this is where the, the person you're playing against can have a real effect. Extension call. He's made one mistake and he's had to sit in his chair and lose two frames off the back of it. And Tom Cousins has, all, has shown in his match in two frames that he is not in the mood to mess around here. Carl knows if he's going to win this match, he's going to have to find a gear or two. Red ball's in play. So the only tricky red on the table is the one he's nearest to now. It goes to the top left. He may not take it straight away. He may take the one to the, the bottom right first, get a little bit straighter on it. Decides to go up the table for the two at the top, leaving the other two at the bottom. I thought he might clear the ones at the bottom first, but with the eight, where the eight ball's placed, that shouldn't be a, a big problem for him. Leave the one over the right centre as your last ball. Should be fairly comfortable from there. Never, ever happy as he would be in perfect position. He's got a touch of the Phil Harrison's about him in that sense. Yeah, he certainly lets us know what he's thinking as well, which is a lot of fun. Important that he came back to nearly straight just so he could just drop it in. Didn't want to leave much angle on this red at all. Needed this, Carl Morris. And finishes a job, 2-1. That was a classy finish from Carl. Really important finish as well, having lost two, the opening two frames. Important that he now lets Tom Cousins know that he is absolutely here in this match. Yeah, he's almost gained his respect in a sense, hasn't he? Yeah, especially, you know, coming off the back of the match previously, where he, you know, he was taking a couple of chances in the frames. It, he's got that first visit on the board, and now over to you, Tom. Tom's perfectly happy with that, of course. I think he's got uh, plenty of support out there in the arena. It's uh, gradually filled up as the day's gone on. Plenty of passing traffic. Frame four. Tom Cousins to break. Another opportunity to see this Tom Cousins break. See if he can control the cue ball better this time. Well, later answer it was a resounding no, but he got enough on it just to make a ball. Yeah, that's almost as bad as Tom Cousins can hit the break, and he still made a couple of balls. Yeah. Watch this cue ball, nearly in the left centre pocket. It actually misses the left centre pocket in a strange way. It's gone below it, which shows he really miss hit it. Really did, yeah, almost half ball on the front ball. Great reaction as well, shake of the head. Now he's got away with one there. We had a chat with him in the studio actually after his first match and he was saying that he, he started off breaking from the central because he Yellow felt that was the right way to go on this table but didn't work out for him so he's changed to his original plan the way he always likes to break which is a bit more halfway between the centre and the, and the side rail. Still trying to catch that front ball as square as possible and bring the cue wall up the middle of the table. That's a terrific shot. Lovely breakout shot. All his work just done in, in one fell swoop. Not easy going into it from that angle no, to get both of them out really comfortably. Like That's why he hit that shot with quite a bit of pace because he was worried if he plays it more delicately, the yellow one of the yellows could easily stick in amongst those reds, but played it with enough pace just to clear it out. And actually, he couldn't have hoped for it to come out any better than it has. It's come out like a dream for him. 
And also he had the worry as well that if he, he caught it a little bit dodgy, the, the key wall could end up in amongst those reds just as and, easily. And on nothing, yeah, absolutely. That could not have come out better for Tom Cousins. Now he's just got to sort of re-pick his pattern. He looks in the mood, doesn't he? And I know uh, you'll personally be feeling quite smug because I know you were... You had him as your dark horse and the pundits pick him before the start of the show. Yeah, the only problem with that is I'm not sure. I mean, and I'm saying this to you as well, because you picked a world champion as your dark horse <laughs> as well. But I'm not sure we can pick world champions as dark horses. But You we, can in this field. We, we, but yeah, we did in this field. But we both went for former world champions. This is awkward, though. Hampered queuing to the one in the centre of the table. Awkward angle on that one as well. Could still pop the one to the bottom left. He's, since he played the breakout shot, he's just not controlled the cue ball. He's not quite put it where he wanted to. He's been a roll out here and there, which is why he's in this position. And it's still slightly awkward. He can get through the gap to the one nearest the bottom right-hand corner pocket. I think he's got just the right angle to screw up the right-hand side of the table as well. And decided to move the cue ball quite a bit more than just getting up the right hand side and shot. He'll take that. Yeah, I think he's played a little bit of an area there because that's a very, very difficult pace shot to judge, but he'll absolutely take that. Yeah, I'm not not sure I could say exactly which pocket he was playing for that yellow in, but he's given himself options, hasn't he? If, if he's too short, he's got it in the middle. If he's too long, he's got it in the top left. It's, it's just a good line. Beautifully done from Tom Cousins. He really, really right. looks on it so far today. This is a bit, bit of a message, I feel like, from TC this. Yeah, I thought he was just going to screw up the, the right-hand side of the table, but had a shade more angle on it than that, which is probably why he's tried to move the queue all a bit further around. In the end, he would have been happy with where it finished. But I agree with you. He's He doesn't, looks on it. He really does. I think his his nerves of joining the Ultimate Pool Pro Series has kind of gone. He's up and running now. He's just Tom Cousins, the two-time world champion and, and a danger to win any single event he plays in. Yeah, it was, it was sort of a little bit of a fear after watching him in the in the Pairs Cup. It looked nothing like the, the, the top cat that we've all known and loved for a number of years now. So just super player to watch in, in full flow. And he was, I mean, five. by his own admission, miles oh, off it a few weeks ago. So it's, uh, it's good to see him back to his best because uh, a sort of fit and firing Tom Cousins is, well, he's a, he, he's a dream matchup for for us fans anyway, for, for so many different players. Yeah, something to really look forward to through 2022 and the rest of this event, of course. He's got plenty of work left to do in this match. Carl Morris has made a habit this year of turning some matches around. <laughs> yeah, do not rule it out. There's no there's no point ever until the match is over as Kalmar is out of a match. There was a little part of me as well, which watching that match against Emma about an hour ago when Emma came to the table, four minutes left, 6-2 down and had a, a clearance on. I just uh, I said to the person sat next to me, I said, you know what, if this she was on the other foot here, I half fancy Carl to do this. <laughs> He's got that about him. He certainly has. He's made a, making a habit of doing Extension it. Call. The thing I think he'll be frustrated at is he keeps putting himself in the position where he needs to come up with the, the fireworks and the, the magic to get out of out of trouble. But I think the more he the more he plays as we go into the second season on his comeback, I think the, the more we're gonna see the really good tight Yellow control return and good patterns and I do think we'll see his level improve but it's a dry break here so it's going to give Tom Cousins a chance it's not a great chance in truth eight balls a real problem
So he's just trying to work out which which way he's going to try and break out the eight ball. He's going to probably have to leave one of the two yellows nearest it for the breakout shot. Might be able to just about get to it now. Oh, he tried. And oh, is he had a bit of bad luck there? Yeah, I was just wondering, did that come out in the back of the pocket? Let's have a look. Might have just tried to pinch the pocket too much. Yeah, just tried to pinch the pocket a fraction too much. And that's forced the miss. He didn't have the perfect angle. Yeah, those of you who may be new to Elite Eight will pull on your screens. It's very much a thing where players at this level will absolutely try and pop balls in certain parts of pockets to get the perfect angle. Uh, plenty of room for a for a red or a yellow in these pockets. Not as much room as some people would have you believe, but there's plenty of room. And you take it right in the left and right in the right, you can really change the angle of a ball. Yeah, it's actually amazing how much you can manipulate it and how much you can change the angles. And that's the level these men and women are operating at. Carl wanted the cue ball to finish the other side of this red. Easy snooker if he wants it. Fairly easy escape as well, unless he gets it right behind. Even if he has to leave Tom two cushions, it's a fairly big target. So does he gain much by laying the snooker? I think you know the answer to that. Carl's always been a percentage player. Yeah, and I think the argument here is that even if he's not expecting Tom Cousins to foul here, not expecting to get Cubo in hand, but he's thinking if Tom does get out by going for the cluster of three together, there's a, every chance he leaves him on the red nearest the little cluster of three and either or the, the red to the top left. So he, Carl's thinking he's going to get a better opportunity than trying to chase from where he was. Played that well, very deliberately. Yeah, has still left Carl Morris a chance, though. Red to the top right. And I think he can get in the one in behind the one to the top left after that. Yeah, it looks like he's just looking at a soft cannon onto the yellows to hold that cue ball. Want to run. Don't think he's got it. And the best thing about commentating on Carl Morris, you know whether he's got it. <laughs> exactly. He will let you know. I was slightly surprised at the pace he's played that shot. I thought when he was lining it up, it, it obviously he'd know by being right behind it, but I felt like he could play like a soft cannon, so just that the cue ball just almost hits the first yellow and just dies where it is. And, and then he's on the red to the top left. He may have decided to, he didn't want to leave that angle and he was trying to get better on it, but slightly surprised to see him play it so pacey. The good news for Carl Morris is the fact that the two yellows he played, which were both comfortable into the left middle pocket, have now gone into really awkward positions, so it puts him ahead tactically. Still a long way left in this match. We've, well, we're just approaching the halfway point, in fact. So Tom just turning the table over. Not leaving any reds on. Well, Carl has left a yellow on. Will Tim, uh, will Tim, will Tom be uh, interested? Oh, he's a very aggressive player by nature, is Tom Cousins. Wouldn't be surprised. How does he bide his time? Looks like he's going for it. I think it's worth going for it if the one of the yellows at the top doubles because it then opens up the other one as a potential double as well. Or if you get the right angle on it, you could be able to cannon them open. So he could cut that yellow, but plays the double to control the cue ball. Eat more easily. When you look from the overhead, I don't think the, the double might, might not be on here. Oh, that's clever. Unlucky. 
That was clever. It's a great effort. Let's have another look at this one. This takes a bit of working out. Playing a, a double plant. That's very close. If Risky. That, if that had gone in, that would have been <laughs> a little bit special, wouldn't it? He's been a little fortunate, in truth, that the yellow, one of the yellows has come across and blocked the red to the bottom right-hand corner. So he actually didn't leave a shot on. It's not the best safety car I've ever played either. I think Tom's got a clean run to at least two of his balls here. If, if not, I think he's just blocked off in the middle of those yellows in the line of three. He's not got ages to play this. Clever. Loss of turn. Good cue ball. Takes a red of cars off the table. Has he just got the cue ball a fraction too far to the right-hand side? Has he left the, uh, the red to the bottom right? Even if he has, it's a tough pot and the natural path of the cue ball is going quite close to the eight ball, which wouldn't be ideal for Carl Morris. So all in all, one of those shot where, from Tom Cousins. Yeah, I think it's one of those where Tom Cousins is delighted to see Carl go and take it on. Yeah. And if he does and goes and makes it, then fair play to him. Shots. Needs the cue ball to pull up. Needs it to pull up. And I think it has. I don't think he's OK. Great shot that was from Carl. He's mullered that double in. We have seen those those doubles missed a lot today. The uh, cushions are playing pretty short. Well, speaking of short. Not happy. I think he was playing for the red into the right centre, but... Yeah, it could be, could be short or too long. The fact yeah. that we don't actually necessarily know is a pretty <laughs> good indicator. It's not the greatest of shots. Well, as we've said many times, uh, Carl's pointed exactly where he wanted it to be. Now he's having a look at the double. Oh, that was very close, you know. Even with the flick, this was really close. Quite a lot of time burnt in this frame as well. And the longer this frame goes on, the more important it becomes for Carl Morris. Obviously, going four and behind would be, wouldn't be a great place to be. But four and behind with 25 minutes on the clock is certainly better than 15. I had another little nudge there, really. We're not leaving Tom anything to go at. Tom's played quite a cute little safety. So is Carl going to play this with lots of pace and try and make something happen, or is he just going to try and not hit the red and not foul? I think he's gearing up here for something with lots of pace. Oh, he misses the red. Foul. Not to be. Ball in hand. He's not missed that by much, though. Matt Ward still going strong. Doesn't miss a trick, that man. This yellow looks tight, but it must go. Because he's playing for it. And you can clearly see from that camera angle it goes comfortably enough. That was the only ball that had any sort of issue with, well, the yellows at least. Eight balls the hardest ball on the table to to get on, but he's going to have a perfect angle to do so off the yellow to the left middle. He's made really, really hard. Well, I think the, the frame itself has just been a little bit he heavy weather, really, for Tom Cousins. Been a bit of hard work, but this was a really important frame to win, and it looks like it is going to be TC who is going to get the victory. I agree with you. I think, for me, though, I think that's a frame where Tom Cousins has had to... That was the first real guilt-edge chance he had to win the frame. He had a half chance earlier on. The rest of the time, he was kept at arm's length through, uh, throughout the frame. Frame that toed and froed with some... Excellent shots, some very nearly excellent shots. Both players very much played their part. But in the end, despite that fantastic double from
Carl Houdini Morris. This miss would end up costing him very dear. You see on the, the replays there, after making the double, he it's the next shot that he played that really hurt him. Ended up missing the double, but he wanted to be on that comfortably into the centre pocket so he could play the natural position onto the eight ball in the same way that Tom did. Frame six. Tom Cousins to break. Difference Maybe between overrunning by a couple of inches and finishing perfect is a frame. Oh, bang. <laughs> Goodness me. You know, we're sort of talking about that effortless Q power that Tom Cousins possesses. This is extraordinary. And you almost don't want to watch the cue ball there. Just watch the pack just explode. Also watch him. Notice how very little moves. It's, it's pretty much just his arm. Some players generate power by really jumping on the shot and really getting their whole body into it, whereas Tom, nothing else. He's trying to keep everything still apart from his cue arm, and then it, it just he can generate extreme power doing that, keeping which himself perfectly in his normal cue action and normal shape. Yeah, which tells you two things. It tells you, one, he's got a lot of natural cue power, that much is obvious, but it also tells you he's got wonderful timing. Yes, yes. You can't break with that much power without it. Wanted a little bit more angle on this shot, which is why he gave himself the sort of sarta sarcastic tap of the table. Wanted the cue ball to be about the same distance again away from the cushion that it, than it is now, so he could just comfortably drift across to the, be straight on one of the reds to the bottom left-hand corner. So a complete change of route for Tom, and that's not worked. That was always liable to go a little bit wrong. That was really tricky. You can just see Carl Morris, a little wipe of the hands at the back of the arena, readies himself. He knows he could be called to arms in just a moment. It almost feels like a, a Carl Morris moment, doesn't it? 4-1 down with, what, 14 minutes left? Ah, you need at least 10 more minutes off the match <laughs> clock before it's a Carl Morris moment. He set himself some high standards. <laughs> oh, he's nice. I'd like, oh, where's that eight ball? It's okay. I like what Tom's tried to do there. It's creative. He's, what this rule set creates is, it's a real, real meritocratic rule set, this. It really heavily punishes mistakes. And if you go through a finish and you don't end up making it, the massive odds are that you end up losing the frame. So there's not much value there in Tom trying to find some kind of ridiculous safety. Just got to try and find a way to carry on potting and keep Carl off the table. Yeah, I completely agree. So often you, you get so deep into a finish that you're almost forced into coming up with, even if it's a one in a hundred shot, you almost feel like you need to take it on. There's that uh, no finger, no thumb bridge that Carl pulls out every now and then. Essentially a one-handed shot that. Yeah, not many Shout players. out only the bullet bail. Yeah, not many players do it. The ball in that way was beaten by John Rowe in the prelims yesterday. Carl's really annoyed with himself here. He wanted to be on the, the ball nearest the pocket. He didn't really want to have to play the plant. And the, the thing to watch here is when he plays the plant, the yellow he hits is going to track towards that top cushion. Doesn't want to kill that yellow. Just about OK. It wouldn't be the first time that Carl Morris has rolled away the stone in a match. Is this the start of something? Tom Cousins with a rueful shake of the head. It all went wrong for him, didn't it, with that screw shot back down the rail? Uh, for me, actually, it was the shot before where he left himself straighter than he yeah. wanted to. And it, it's such a fine line. If, it, if the cue ball goes a, an inch less, he's got enough angle to make it, you know, Get to create the angle he needs. 
Um, so he's only a roll or two away from absolute perfect position, and he ended up in a in a place where he couldn't get out from. It is such a fine line in, at this game, and it's so easy to get lulled into the sort of sense of these top players and making the game look easy all the time that you think it's an easy game, but it, it really isn't. You have to pick good routes and be pinpoint. Yeah, I'm sure plenty of you watching at home today will have got the itch and got the urge to get down the the local club and and have a bit of a whack. I will forewarn you, it will annoy you for the first 20 minutes. Because <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks. Yeah. 12 minutes back and Carl Morris trails by two frames. Wants a ball and he's got one. And this is a decent chance. Yeah, this is best break of the match. This match is very, very far from over. Yeah, these yellows look very inviting. They really do. I think the fact could... that Tom Cousins has made one mistake in the yeah. match, it feels like Carl's had a lot more sort of chances and sort of table time. Made a few more mistakes, but he is right in this match. Still plenty of time left too. And we know for a fact from speaking to him a few weeks ago, Tom Cousins is not the world's biggest fan of the 15 second shot clock. Carl Morris, however, feels, I, I mean, I don't know if he's a fan of it, but he's produced some iconic moments. Whether he likes it or not, he's certainly got a big advantage, I think, when we go to 15 seconds a shot because of that over Tom. Definitely something to keep an eye on. Part of the reason why you tend to get these no filter reactions from Carl Morris if you are watching for the first time. He's a very proud member of the deaf community. Doesn't wear his hearing aid when he's playing. And you get all you can get all sorts of <laughs> craziness going on. He's done well to reach this if he can. This is some yoga. Yeah, that is some stretch there. I'm not sure I could uh, get into that position. Any more picks effort. and blankets and he was in some real trouble. Yeah. He's done so well there. Yeah, he was tempted to play that behind the back. What about left-handed? In the end, he stretched right across the table. Played it comfortably enough. One good positional shot here and it should be simple. That is not the positional shot, though. That Has he got away with it? Not worry about it. If he's straight on this to the top right corner, then he's very lucky. It's tight, but I think he's okay. No, he's having to just swerve this. No, I couldn't get it around. Almost got away with it. He's... I don't want to say rightly livid with himself, but he's... He should be a little bit annoyed there. He's he's let one go. He really has. That like I said one good positional shot that was always quite all that was required to win the frame. He just needed a bit of care and attention on it. There was actually quite a bit of margin of error on the shot as well. <laughs> and he just got it wrong. A little shake of the head there from Tom Cousins. The shot clock caught him out a few times in the uh, Pairs Cup a few weeks ago. Match clock caught him out pretty infamously in his first ever match when he had fifteen seconds to pot a couple of balls and Match clock expired on him without him really realising what was going on. Yeah, and he said in his interview afterwards that it just wasn't comfortable at all. I don't think anyone's comfortable at 15 seconds, but it really is something he's going to have to watch out for with ultimate ball. Yeah, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. No, absolutely not. I think he'll be very pleased to be able to get this frame on the board just because that, that three frame margin is just going to is such a big difference as we're in 15 seconds a shot. Or so you'd think. Just come far enough. That's okay. play these at five seconds a shot though no dramas with those last few balls for Tom Cousins 
Five two in front, two from home. Just under eight minutes on the watch. This is the moment that costs Carl the frame. All Carl has to do is is hit the gap almost in between the two yellows. There's quite a big margin of error there, and he, he's he's landed nowhere. Yeah, this is an incredibly difficult shot. That was always massive odds against. Frustration for Carl Morris. The way still, Carl, yeah, still thinking about it. I was thinking, just thinking about that positional shot he got wrong. I think in the way he's played it in the end, I think he's tried to get the cue ball further up the table to play on the the yellow. They ended up missing into the right centre pocket, whereas I think I might be tempted to play it long and and just play for the gap. You've got the one past the eight ball, or you've got the long one, and then vice versa. Play for that area, but. He saw it differently. To break, leading five frames to two. Two from home then, Tom Cousins, and with the break. God, blimey. Spiders. He is incredible. It really is. There's few people in the world who hit a break like that. There, it is a very, very select club. <laughs> Extension call. And they come out okay, but does he have a first shot? Because if he doesn't, he's in a little bit of trouble because whoever comes to the table with a shot here cleans these up. This is awkward. This is really awkward. Great shot. Yellow ball's in play. That's such a better shot than it looked. Yeah, not easy when they're that close together. Having to cue down on the ball to avoid playing a, a push shot or a double hit or anything like that. So the yellow on the left-hand side below the centre pocket, that goes past the reds to the corner. And then the eight ball's got plenty of room as well, so no problems at all with this layout. Only thing to watch for, if he leaves the yellow down the cushion as his last ball, just don't leave yourself just off straight the wrong way. Just make sure you give yourself enough angle just to comfortably get the cue ball out. But with the yellow near the left centre pocket, shouldn't be any problems in doing that. You can pretty much pick the angle you want. Yeah, this is what we were talking about, where you can pinch the pocket left or right and really place the cue ball. It's such an easy part, it's unmissable. Yeah, point is, far to the right as he could, just to basically make it straight. Sit right on this yellow, down the rail. This finish has all been about that first shot. Excellent pot to the corner. Yeah, high quality from Tom Cousins. He goes on the hill. One from home right. against Carl Houdini Morris. So Carl's found himself in some tough spots this year, but four frames behind. A few minutes to go now. This would be his greatest escape I, I if he was just to pull this up. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> but more than anything, forget about the match clock and anything else you've got to avoid Tom Cousins having opportunities off his break and he's shown how big a, a weapon his break is it's hard to see Tom not getting a chance off well he's going to have at least you know if, if things go against him at least a couple of breaks it's just hard to see that not happening so very difficult for Carl to see a, a way back in this match I think he's just trying to work it out one and a half minutes per frame he says four frames <laughs> It's amazing how much he thinks about it. A golden break would help the situation. He still believes. Doesn't get the eight ball in motion at all. Is he going to make a ball? Yes. Is the cue ball in? Yes. And that may well do it. That may well do it. Cue ball did a lot of travelling here to go in, that, in off on that corner. Amazing, doesn't get touched by any other ball. Yeah, that's tough. Extension called. So Tom, Tom Cousins can take his time here. If he's if he's sensible, he'd choose up as much clock as possible whilst going through the, the motions on the finish. Safe in the knowledge that should anything go wrong, he's probably taking the finish away on the match clock as well. Red ball's in play. A tricky little finish, but... Key was getting into the area is in now. 
OK, he'd love to have been on the one down the rail straight away, but he's on the next one. Nice control on that shot. Could have easily played the one over the right centre on the previous shot to get on the one down the rail, but that would have made the route out trickier. Played that well. Tom Love Cousins. this finish from Tom. It's been really nice just the way he's controlled the cue ball in and around the, the tricky area there around the eight ball. Really nice to watch. Yeah, it's been superb. It really has. He's done precious little wrong all day, Tom Cousins, and he's going to take his place in the last eight of his first Pro Series event. Brilliant from Top Cat, who is the top dog this afternoon on the Pro Series. Carl Morris vanquished 